What's up guys, welcome back to FNG Academy. Buck here, former Green Beret, here to help you guys get selected. All right guys, today we're gonna give you the top five tips for preparation for SFAS, Q course, whatever special operations um, community you're trying to get into, top five tips for running. As I've said in the past, it's so important to be a good runner when you're going to selection, whether you're going to ranger selection, SFAS, the Q course, running is key. But a lot of you guys are, you ask me all the time, well, what kind of running schedule should I be on? And you have all these questions about running, I get it. You wanna know how fast you need to be. You wanna feel confident that your running skills are progressing where they're supposed to be. With that being said, tip number one is gonna help you do that. And tip number one is the PT test. Focus on the PT test. A PT test is so important because it's your entry into the community. If you fail the PT test, you're out. I mean, you could have a bad day on a group run and maybe you'll catch a little shit from cadre, but if you fail the PT test, you're gone, you're going home. So there's, it's the most important physical test you guys are gonna take. For the Army, it's a two mile run, two minutes max effort push-ups, two minutes max effort sit-ups, and you guys are going to be, regardless of your age, judged from 18 to 21 standard, which I'm pretty sure that puts push-ups in the 80s and sit-ups in the 80s, which I understand that may seem like a lot for some of you guys that just aren't inclined to push-ups yet, or you're just not that fast for runner yet. The PT test should be something that's not a surprise on the morning of. We all hate doing it, so a lot of us avoid it and neglect it completely, but when I was through, going through the Q course, I did a... PT test on my own at least once a week, if not twice a week, especially if we knew we had a PT test coming up. So always be doing the PT test on your own and tracking your progression until you're getting to the point where you're maxing it out. That is your goal. By the time you go to selection, you should be as close to maxing that PT test out as possible, if not over. All right, guys, that leads me into tip number two. And tip number two is something that I learned the hard way. I didn't learn this right in selection, the Q course. I got a lot of injuries, uh, heel bruises, shin splints, all these things from not knowing this. I didn't figure this out till way later when I started doing marathons and ultra marathons. And that is pick the right shoes. Without the right shoes, you're really gonna look at increasing your chances for injury. So what did I use? My favorite shoe was the Hoka. So this is the Hoka Challenger was it ATR or five? This thing felt good in the store and I got no injuries even running 30 plus miles in these. Uh, they're awesome. They're ugly as shit, but who cares? They're awesome and they're gonna help you prevent injury and I love them. I'm not saying go out and buy these exact ones. That's, don't do that. What you need to do is go to a running store and try on multiple pairs of shoes because Hoka makes some that are way too narrow for me and I would be miserable in. Another shoe that I wore for the street, again, I don't know what it is about ugly ass shoes, but they seem to work amazing, is this uh, Ultra, what is it, the Torin, the Ultra Torin. It's a zero drop. It's, again, it's at a wide uh, toe box to help your, your feet, your toes spread. I loved it until I blew them out. Obviously they're, they're garbage now, but they were great. Again, I'm not saying go buy those ones. Get yourself to a running store, talk to a professional, and have them fit you with the best shoes for you. That is gonna make a huge difference in your running game, I promise. Right, guys, tip number three. This is another thing that it took me running the ultras to really figure out and to learn, and that is that you need to learn how to eat before running. If you show up on the day of the PT test and you're that guy that just started crushing you know, carbs or whatever he read on the internet, and you start throwing up and cramping during the PT test, well, guess what? You just ruin your shot. Start during your mock PT test, start experimenting with gels, uh, different foods, different hydration. You know, when I was doing the ultra, sometimes I would do just water. I would have one water bottle with uh, straight water and one with a salt electrolyte mixture to make sure that I, I wasn't getting dehydrated. So you need to experiment with those things beforehand so that way, again, you don't want to be the guy that's cramping up and vomiting before you finish the race and then losing your chance of getting selected. All right, guys, tip number four. Tip number four is going to give you an idea of how much you should be running. 
So for me personally, and again, I'm not an expert, but this is what worked for me. I really didn't run past five miles getting ready for uh, selection. Even when I was in ranger assessment selection, their PT test is five miles. So five miles became the standard for long runs. So to give you an idea of the kind of mileage you should be putting in, your long run should be about five miles. If you wanna go more, that's up to you, but you don't really need to. Outside of the five mile being your max, you really wanna work on pacing for your one mile and your two mile runs. Your pacing is gonna be super important as far as how fast you can get it done without hitting the wall and then just dying, which leads us into tip number five, pacing and breathing. These things are super important. Just an example, on the PT test, you're gonna notice that a lot of guys start up and they just take off running. Their adrenaline is pumping, they're feeling really good, and they just take off sprinting, and then all of a sudden, boom, they hit a wall. Half lap to a full lap in, they just slow way down. That's the worst thing you could do. Start off, get your breathing right, get your heart rate right, and this is something I used to think about every time before I took the PT test. Just be okay with people passing you right out the gate. That never bothered me. I never wanted to hit a wall with my heart rate and my breathing to the point where I felt like I was in a panic breathing because I went too fast right out the gate. So relax, breathe, escalate your pace slowly for the two mile or the five mile, whatever test that you're in. Get your heart rate up and nice and elevated to your uh, pace for the rest of the run. And then once your heart rate's elevated to the point of running, you're not going to feel this like panicky, oh shit feeling when you can't breathe. And you'll be able to ease your pace faster and faster until you get to that nice pace that you know you can maintain for the one mile, two mile, five mile. So, all right guys, those are my tips. I appreciate you coming. I appreciate all the followers. You guys blew the thousand uh, subscriber mark out the window, like overnight. So that being said, I owe you the live. We're going to set it up for this Saturday. I'll do one more video to give you the exact times and when we're going to do that. It's going to be awesome. I'll answer all your guys' questions for one hour straight. It'll, even if one person shows up, well, it'll be one-on-one -on -one coaching for one hour. So appreciate you guys. Talk to you next time. Never wanted was you, but you left me alone inside these empty broken walls. And I can't see it clearly, but it's obvious I know.